Konnichiwa, this is Thomas Hendricks with Krona24 in Tokyo, and today we have the distinct pleasure of sitting down with Masayuki Hirota, author, lecturer, and editor-in-chief of Krona's Japan, one of the largest and most influential watch magazines in the country, and we're lucky enough to have him contribute to the Krona24 magazine as well. Hirota-san, thank you so, so much for having us here at Krona Theory in Ginza, Tokyo. Yes, yes. I am Masaki Hirota, editor-in-chief of Kronos Japan Edition. So today I'm very lucky to be invited by Kron24 to talk a lot about uh, the uniqueness of Japanese watch culture and Japanese watch market and this shop, Chrono Theory. Yes, Yoroshiku and we are very happy to have you. So speaking of which, yes. can you tell us a little bit about where we are and what makes this place special? Okay, so there are three, three interesting features of this shop, Chrono Theory. Yes. The first one is the owner of this shop, Mr. Chrono Peace, yes. uh, has been a crazy watch collector. Mm -hmm. And he is covered twice in New York Times as an anonymous eminent watch collector. And he bought over 800 watches 800. And 800 watches, especially in Odin Pig, etc. Then he told me so in that time, so he got many frustration in buying watches. So today he wants to establish uh, the, his own shop, uh, so eliminating the frustration in buying watches. So today, last year, he opened this shop as a producer. This shop is a watch bar. A watch bar? A watch bar. Have you ever visited Watchbird? I haven't, no. So for those who might not be able to see, we have some very nice drinks behind the counter right here. And the nice thing about that is it's more, it's not only a store, but it's also a place where people can come, hang out, get to know each other, see these watches up close and have a good time. Yes, and you can drink here. Yes. And sometimes, sometimes there, we, if we drink too much, buy watches here. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it a little easier to buy a watch once you. Once you have a, a little something in your system. Good reason. And the second point is the owner has been crazy for the tiny micro brands yes. like Ulverk, etc. And he has very strong connection with such watchmakers. As far as I know, this shop is now dealing over 30 brands. Wow. wow. Yeah. And a lot of brands that are hard to see yes. in other places. And then we have some here yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, I know we have um, some formats ones, which you are a big fan of, including this field watch here. What can you tell me about this? Yeah, this watch is, how can I say, is a very, very, very typical uh, tactical watch. The price is very reasonable, mm -hmm. but the case is made with the titanium. Yeah, it's a, it's a special yeah, yeah, titanium. Yeah. Hardened titanium, the titanium because hardness is over 900. In the seven times harder than normal titanium. Oh, yeah. So it's a very tactical timepiece. Yes, yeah, very easy to get into as well. This so. maker is selling watch directly to the consumer. It's quite unique. Nonetheless. Yes, yes. And we have another format here as well, right? I love the case shape of this one. The design is beautiful. <laughs> this one is uh, the Essence. Essence. Oh. This, this watch oh. has an interesting suspension. Ah. Suspension to reduce the shock to the watch. Yeah, so the case actually, the bezel actually pops up a so, little bit out of the case. Uh, I've never seen that before. So maybe this is the first attempt in this in watch industry. The one big feature of Formex is considering the quality, the price is very yes. inexpensive. And it's not a brand that a lot of people know about. The whole, all micro brands are moving up a little yeah. bit and this one in particular, I've seen yeah, popping yeah. up more yeah. and more when I see collectors in New York, especially yeah. this formats is one that I start so, to see. So, and they're, so they're getting a bigger fan base yeah. every year. You're right, you're right. So there, you can see the actual one here in Ginza. Generally, it's impossible to see the actual one in a shop, but you can see here in Kron series. And I want to speak a little bit about the watch that you have on your wrist today. Oh. Today, so I choose the Brampan, the 1990s. This watch is carries uh, the caliber uh, 7001, made by Puzo and uh, modified by Frederick Pige mm. for the Brampan. The case size is 33 millimeters. And very, very thin. Very, very thin. That's 
maybe the thickness of the case is 8 mm. It looks gorgeous, but the size is so small down there. So it's still keeping a sort of anonymous. Yeah. And it movie. fits you. It fits you very Thank well. Thank you for your very elegant. Yourself. But like yourself. Yes. And speaking of anonymous, I have my sterile dial yeah, Benris type it's one. It's Conis's choice. Yes. Set um, with a GMT bezel set to 13 hours a, 13 hours behind for yeah. New York City. <laughs> <laughs> so very long journey just to, yeah, yeah. to come here and speak with you as well and visit this place. And as far as um, being in Japan here, um, they're getting a lot more popular in the US now, both um, vintage Seikos, Grand Seikos especially, they're really, really getting popular in the US, and a few um, micro Japanese brands yeah. as well, you know, from uh, Hajime Asaoka yeah. and things like that. Are there ones that you think don't get enough attention or ones oh, that are recommendations yeah, you would have? Tough question, Thomas, yeah. a tough question. <laughs> but fortunately, so, Fortunately, you can see good example here in Chrome Theory. So later you can see the Minase watches, tiny manufacturer. Uh, they're located in Akita, mm -hmm. northern part of Japan. They made a wonderful bracelet for some some major Japanese brands. Yeah, so they're in manufacturing for other brands yeah. behind the scenes, yes. and then made their own product. So Minase is a place located, mm -hmm. factory located. There, so then now the quality is so nice. Ah. So that that watch is worth buying. At least you can, you will be fascinated with that watch after seeing the actual one. But there, it's quite difficult to to find the actual product. Yeah, yeah, it's not one that we have in the U.S. that I know of. Okay, that's a hot tip. That's a good yeah. recommendation. So, but you can see here. In, <laughs> yeah, in current theory. So, yeah, in so the that Minase is my recommendation. Yeah, yeah, so. Definitely, I can say so. And I want to ask you a little bit about Japanese collectors as well. Um, so are there things you've noticed being in the industry and traveling around to the US and Europe um, and other parts of Asia as well? Are there certain things that Japanese collectors look for? Do they do they value things differently than maybe... Tough question, Dana. But generally, I can say uh, Asian collector, including, including Japanese, are focusing on tiny detail, mm -hmm. like the finishing of the case, dials, etc. So that's the um, most uh, uh, interesting point of uh, Asian collectors, including Japanese. So. And speaking of tiny details, one watch we were talking about uh, earlier is this Ophion. Ah, Ophion. Yeah. Have you ever seen this watch? Never in person. Online, yes. If you look through my saved yeah. images on my phone, you will find more than a yeah. few of these, yes. What can you tell me about this? Because there are a lot of important people that have worked on this piece as well. Ophion, this company is established in 2015, I guess. I'm not sure. So this one is the new Veros, released in 2018. The interesting point is this model is the mix of Switzerland and Germany. The, you can see the yeah on the case engrave, pack it says engraved here seventy percent Swiss, thirty percent German. Germany, so so proud, yes, so, and a beautiful so, movement in so, here. That's it deserves a close up. The die is uh, made in Germany, and again, it's it's a brand where. This is the first time I've seen it, and I had to fly halfway across the world to do so. Me too, me too, me too. Me too. I can see only here in Chrome Theory. And I want to talk about another brand that we don't see very often, yeah, that I've never seen before, before coming here to Chrome Theory. Karl Zucchi and Zone, Austria, mm -hmm. watchmaker. Yeah. And they're producing a very interesting timepieces using Voche Micro Rotor Bosch. Ah. The production is very limited. Now. Which is why it's so thin that yeah. they have the Micro Rotor there. The quality is so nice, but the production is so limited. There, Generally, we can never see. Yeah, but one thing I think that we see through a lot of these pieces mm. that we have in the shop is that people are trying new things yeah. and coming up with new yeah. ideas that people have never seen before. For example, like yeah. this, we have this kind of stripe pattern on the dial. It's not a full yeah. skeleton yeah. dial, but you can see this beautiful yeah. movement through the front as well and see the micro rotor move around. So, so cool. Now, my last question for yeah. you, Hoorto san. We've been talking a lot. My mouth is feeling a little bit dry. We are in not only a store, but a bar as well. Is there a particular drink you like to celebrate with? Ah, generally, so I, I prefer to drink the Yamazaki. Ah, much like this one right yes, here? Yes, 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 yes. 
typical and legendary Japanese whiskey. The fortunately, the owner and producer of this shop, Mr. Uh, Krompis, uh, is the crazy also for the whiskey. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you can choose the various type of whiskey here in Kron Seri. But my favorite one is Yamazaki. This, yeah. You can drink real Yamazaki here in Kron Seri. Yeah. And we've seen the wonderful timepieces. So with that in mind, what do you say we turn these cameras off and have a drink? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Masayuki Hirota, editor-in-chief of Kronos Japan. Thank you so, so much for having us. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you.